So last but least, I just want to share one individual step with you that is very important. This is the adjustment to your personal eyesight. And I'm actually going to um, leave this up and hope that you can review this on like uh, still function later on, because when you actually want to use the microscope, it's also very important that you go through individual adjustments. That's the microscope calibration for your particular eyesight that somebody can view what you see on an external monitor as well, because you will actually have a much larger vision of a field inside the microscope than what a camera can put out and actually show to somebody on an external monitor. And if you want to do this correctly, that anybody who's watching your procedure is seeing it perfectly well on an external screen or through a computer streaming system, <clears throat> you want to have to go through those procedures that I have to explain to you in the very beginning, the dominant eye, non-dominant eye, and then the adjustment of the focus at the highest magnification from the very, very beginning. And the way how to do this is the first thing is that you have to figure out which one is your dominant eye. And this is really with this technique of superimposition of an object over an object in the distance. So you use your thumb, you stretch it out, you hold it over <clears throat> something in the distance. And whenever your object moves away from the thumb that you stretched out, left side or right side, and the one eye that is open, that's your non-dominant eye. Whenever the thumb stays over the object, that is the, the eye is open, that's the dominant eye. That's the one that's tracing everything. So most people are right eye dominant. It's about one to two out of 10 that are left eye dominant, but most people are actually right eye dominant. So that's why typically all of the microscopes have the documentation ports to the right, having an outgoing uh, connection towards a monitor that's in, this, in the room, because this is really where you zone in onto your particular object during the procedure. And that's the one that you really want to bring in a perfect adjustment. If you were left eye dominant, you would have to put the documentation for an external monitor on documentation port on the left side. But most of the um, camera systems are set up to be on the right side by the manufacturer because most of the people are actually right eye dominant. So your first step will be that you will adjust your microscope and the external monitor to your dominant eye. We're completely forgetting about the non-dominant eye at this point. So we were actually looking, and in my case, it would be the right side of your documentation port uh, in the right side of my binoculars. And I would actually have typically a tiny little cross here in there that's called the reticule which is very helpful for you to center on a particular object inside the microscope. This will help the person who is watching on the computer screen to see everything that you do and also help you to take perfect pictures. So I said it before, you might actually see more in terms of the total area in your microscope than your assistant sees on the screen or that a camera can capture. And because of this, you want to always make sure you're zoning into the center of your crosshairs to the reticule, which should be one of them, and this should always be on the dominant side of your eyes. So you put this in, and what you want to do is you will actually take a look into that eyepiece, and you have a small little adjustment ring on this microscope that you will move around until you get a very, very clear picture of these crosshairs. You're just looking at the crosshairs. And this little adjustment ring is called a diopter ring. You saw it before, the picture of the binoculars. And what it does for you is actually gives you the perfect vision in your dominant eyesight for that particular eyepiece. And now the next thing will be that you will go to an object. It could be a, a banknote. This could be any a business card, something like this, that you will position pretty much in a good distance for your microscope. And you will move this to the highest magnification that is actually going to be possible after you zoomed into this at the low magnification to find the object in the very beginning. And now we will do the fine tuning that I pointed out to you before at the high magnification. And now you can always go back to the lower or mid magnification and everything will stay in focus throughout your procedure. And after you've done this, you pretty much made the chain from your eye to the microscope, eyepiece to the, um, focal, the objective lens in the microscope to the external screen. Um, to the through the documentation port, perfect. 
you will have a crystal clear picture from whatever comes through the objective lens to your eyepieces, and you will have in return a crystal clear picture that's going outwards towards a documentation port on the monitor. And you will not touch this again. This just stays as it is. The next two steps are very simple. You will just look through the non-dominant eyesight, you go at the highest magnification and you adjusted the opt rings in the same way you did it before on the right side. And the only thing you want to do is with the existing settings that you established for the dominant eye, you're going to move in and focus in only your non-dominant eye. And the last step will be that you now bring together your interpupillary distance so that you will see just one perfect centering and your focaling, your personal adjustment to the microscope will be actually completed and you can go ahead and now fully enjoy your dental microscope throughout your endodontic and any other specialty procedures. So here is the summary of all the techniques. Microscope has been one of the most important impactful tools that we've had in endodontics. And I can only highly recommend it to you. I've been using it for over 20 years. And dentistry has been a completely different and much more fun procedure. If you see what you do, you can treat what you can see. And if you have the light and also the perfect position to keep your back and neck in order for the next 10, 20, 30 years of your clinical practice.